Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to another video. This week, I'm gonna show you how to add a reusable modal component to your Next.js project using TypeScript and Tailwind CSS. If you've been following along with my other videos, then you'll know that I've been building a Pomodoro application. It's also sort of a game, but you can learn more about that in my other videos. As a user is running a timer on that application, I wanted to have a prompt that let them know that if they were gonna cancel their current timer, that their progress would be lost. This is what I came up with. So it's a reusable modal component, again, in Next.js using uh, TypeScript and Tailwind. And uh, let's take a look at the code. All right, so the first thing that you need to do on your, wherever you're calling this modal, is that you need to have some piece of state that is controlling whether or not that modal is open. So I have a use state that is a Boolean that is named conf confirmation modal open. And that is purely tracking whether or not this modal is open. And you can see on the handle close, we're just setting the state of that confirmation modal open to the opposite of what it currently is. And then everything in between this component here, uh, starting on line 182, is uh, the custom uh, HTML or JSX that you can pass into this modal component. How does this work and how do modals work in Next.js? So a lot of tutorials are going to tell you to permanently add a div on, uh, to the document file in your Next.js uh, project. I don't like this approach because then you permanently have a div that is only sometimes needed on your um, website at all times. Instead, I'll show you the way that I did it, and I'll also include the link to the article that I sort of followed along with that's from LogRocket. I'll include that in the description as well because I found that very, very helpful. The problem was that that tutorial or article was in JavaScript, and I pretty much only used TypeScript, but it wasn't a huge difference, and I'll show you what I changed. So, uh, again, this is all the JSX that's getting passed into my custom React component. And then here is my confirmation folder, confirmation modal file, sorry. So I did add an interface that is the confirmation modal props. It takes uh, three arguments, children, which is either a children or a child. That's the typing for that if you're curious. Is open, which is, open, which is a Boolean that is exactly the same as the confirmation modal open in the previous uh, file I showed you. And then a handle close. We are saying that this function takes in one argument, which is an object of these three properties, and that is typed to the confirmation modal props, which is an object that has those same properties. Uh, if you have trouble with TypeScript, hopefully that's a clear explanation. I have two use effects here. I'll circle back to those. But then if is open is not true, we're just returning null. So we return nothing inside of this return statement if, if the modal isn't open. However, these use effects will still be called. And that is why when I have this confirmation modal here, I make sure to wrap that in uh, braces and then attach it to whether or not the Boolean is true. Because even if this component is returning null, the JavaScript that is above the return statement is still going to run. And I don't want these use effects permanently running on my main page. I only want them running when the modal is open, essentially. So I have them tied to uh, any return of any um, code from this component is tied to whether or not the modal is open. So going back to these use effects, we have one uh, listening to the handle close and that is handling our escape key. So a user does not have to press close. They can also just press escape and the modal will close. And that's what this is doing. And the other use effect we have is to disable the scroll. So if we pop back into our website, when the modal is up, if I try to scroll, nothing happens. And you'll also see that everything underneath the modal is grayed out and not selectable or clickable. And this is pretty important when you're working with modals uh, so you don't get any weird behavior on your website. And I'll show you how I did that. This use effect is adding a style to the body 
when is open is set to true and then when is open is set to false or in the return statement so this is the the cleanup function on this use effect we're removing it, uh, the hidden property from the document body st overflow style okay so then what about this gray area that comes up underneath the modal so this confirmation modal component that I built is going to return a React portal. And then that portal is going to have only one child, which is a, a, an element here, a React element. And then we have two divs. In the first div, which is set to fixed, top zero, left zero, width of the screen, height of the screen, Z index of 40, that's important, background, whatever, opacity, 50. So that is the background element here. And because that sits over top of our entire website with the Z index to 40, that is uh, going to block any selection of elements underneath that element. And then the modal itself is the second div here. And that's pretty straightforward. We're just passing the children underneath the close button. So then what's important here is this React portal component. So portals are special. Earlier I said I don't like having a, 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 an extra div permanently attached to the document file because if you use your portals correctly, they should create an extra div. You can see here in my uh, elements tab in my Chrome DevTools here, all of the next stuff is inside of this div here. Then we have some other like next stuff here, iframe, script tag for next, whatever. But then we have an extra div at the very bottom of our body wrapper that is the React portal modal container. And if I were to close that, that div disappears. So when I toggle the modal, an additional div is being appended to the bottom of our body, which is where modals are supposed to go semantically according, I think, to the HTML spec. But if I'm wrong on that, someone's definitely gonna let me know in the comments. But I'm pretty sure that that's um, the best for accessibility's sake. So that happens in this React portal function, component, I should say. So um, this is the code for that. Again, I am adding some typing on top of that log rocket article that I follow. Um, children, this could be children or I could type this the same as I typed the confirmation modal, but it's working the way it is, so that's fine. We have one use state here that's basically saying whether or not a uh, wrapper element has been created. And then we use a use layout effect hook, which is semantically more correct than a use effect. Um, and we're just saying the element is this wrapper ID if it exists, and then we haven't created it. But if it doesn't exist, set the system created to true. And then we're going to call this function, which is to create a new wrapper and a pin to body. And that function exists outside of our component because there's just not a need to put it inside of this use layout effect. And we will have a uh, problem in Next.js if it is not inside of a hook because it does reference the document directly. And I'm getting around uh, the problem that we were having in Next.js, uh, just sort of like covering myself here by saying, if there's no document, just return null. Uh, but this code shouldn't run if it's inside of a hook, so it should be a non-issue. And yeah, that's pretty straightforward. So this create wrapper and a pin to body is exactly what is going to create this additional div element here where our code is going to be contained. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, we're also using this create portal hook that comes straight from React. The documentation says we pass the children and then the wrapper element that we're attaching the portal to. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully you found this video helpful and useful. If you have any questions about TypeScript or Next.js or Tailwind, please let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to help you out. If you've been following along week to week, I really appreciate the comments and liking the videos. It means a lot to me. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.